TLC, or thin layer chromatography, is used as a qualitative tool for either monitoring reaction or following a column chromatography. The equipment you need is a developing chamber, all right, and what I have here is a beaker and a watch glass. To prepare the developing chamber, we want to fill it, oh, with three or four milliliters of the solvent that we've chosen to run the TLC, or what's called the eluding solvent or developing solvent. I'm going to place a small piece of filter paper in my developing chamber that I've trimmed before I start to allow the solvent to rise up the filter paper and this will give a total atmosphere of the um, solvent mixture in the developing chamber. The next thing we want to do is to spot our TLC plates. So the TLC plates will be given to you in lab and you want to choose an end, so look carefully at the TLC plates and choose an end that's not chipped, the one that's most uniform. After you've chosen a TLC plate and the end you want to use, you want to use a pencil and place the starting line on the TLC plate. So really lightly with the ruler, I might mark, and you want to make sure again it's below, above where the solvent's going to be, is too lightly. I'm really careful not to chip my TLC plate. Lightly draw a line with pencil on the TLC plate. You do not want to use pen or ink because that will dissolve in the organic solvent. Okay, I'm now ready to spot and I'm going to make a little mark and I'm going to pretend I'm doing a reaction and identify this as starting material and another as product. So you've already pulled the capillaries. Isn't that fun? I love pulling capillaries. And you've dissolved a small amount of the starting material in solvent, as well as the product from the reaction in a solvent. Now we want to spot it on the plate. So you draw up a small amount of the sample, place it on the dot that you've made, and you can see that the solvent spreads out. You just want to dab lightly to add the spot. Sometimes it helps to blow a little to remove the solvent. To check that you actually have spotted enough material or that you haven't spotted way too much, you could place it under the UV lamp and you should be able to see a nice small round spot on the appropriate place. I'm now going to spot the product. on the plate. Again, I would take it over to the UV lamp and check that I have enough sample or the right amount of sample on the plate. Looks great. All right, now for developing the TLC plate. Be very careful when you're handling the plate only to touch the edges. You don't want to get your fingerprints on the silica gel, which is very polar because you'll see your, your finger marks on there and it will disrupt the eluding materials on the plate. So very gently place it in the solvent slowly. I'm going to make sure that it doesn't go, the solvent doesn't go above the spots and let it elute. You want to let the TLC run until it's about a centimeter from the top of the plate. All right, the solvents reached a good height on the TLC plate. So I'm going to gently remove it. You can still see the solvent on it. And before the solvent evaporates, you want to mark 
the solvent front, which is how high the solvent went on the plate. So there's the solvent front. This will be very important for calculating the RF values, which is the ratio between the distance each spot moved from the baseline versus how far the solvent moved from the baseline. All right, now the exciting moment has come where we're going to look at our TLC plate first under the UV lamp and then we'll put it in the iodine chamber. You wanna do the UV lamp first so that the reaction of the iodine with the spots doesn't interfere with the UV visualization. So I'm going to put this under the UV light. <gasps> Perfect. And circle each spot. So here you can see the starting material material has a higher RF value than the product. This is pretty good distance, or, or I've chosen a pretty good solvent system in that the starting material is about in the mid range of the plate. I could have even used a little more polar solvent to move both spots a little higher. All right, now I'm going to visualize it with the iodine. And the iodine will react with any polar or pi bonds present in the molecule. You can increase the rate of the iodine interaction by putting it on a steam cone and warming up the iodine chamber. All right, let's take a look. You can see that each of the spots is stained kind of a yellowish brownish color. You can also see what happens if you get little fingerprints on it on the side there. My fingerprints. All right, again, the RF value would be the measurement of how far each, use centimeters, how far each spot moved from the baseline. So this would be almost 0.9 centimeters to the solvent front, which is 0.8 centimeters. So the product has a lower RF value than the starting material, which indicates that the product is the more polar compound and adhered to the silica gel stronger.